The former cabinet minister was this week re-elected chairperson of the United Nations Committee of Experts on Public Administration. The body comprising 24 specialists met this week at the UN under the theme Transforming Institutions and Governance to Build Forward Better Towards 2030. Our correspondent show and Bryce Peace caught up with Fraser Moliketi on the sidelines of that meeting for a discussion that quickly delved into capacity issues inside the South African Public Service, examining what some of the key remedies might be to improving service delivery countrywide. Geraldine Fraser Moliketi, welcome back to SABC News. It's good to see you. It's good to see you as well and good to be in New York, but cold though. Yeah, after COVID-19 no less. Congratulations mm -hmm. on your re-election as chairperson of the Bureau of the UN Committee of Experts of Public Administration, a group that provides guidelines on public administrative issues related to the internationally agreed development goals. How do you see your role in that capacity? You know, uh, Sherwin, this committee of experts uh, is constituted of 24 individuals from across the world and they generally practitioners, academics, uh, very interesting group of people. Some of them have served in national governments, provincial government. I mean the former Prime Minister of Senegal is part mm. of it. Mm. Our function is to look at uh, Sustainable Development Goal 16 that uh, focuses on building institutions, rule of law, um, that sort of thing. We're looking at it and saying, when we look at the state of public service across the globe or institutions, what does it look like? Mm. Do we really have resilient governments? And this is particularly pertinent coming out of uh, the COVID pandemic. Not that we quite out yet, um, because in 2019 it was very clear, both uh, from the perspective of the public sector and the private sector, that governments and public services were important. There was a high level of trust because of the nature of the pandemic. Mm. But look at governments at the moment, that trust has started dissipating and dissipating in a big way. And it's not just about government at a national level, it's also at a local government level. Where the rubber hits the road. Where the rubber the hits, hits the road. I mean, yeah. you talk about what, it, uh, what does it look like, the public service. It's, uh, I would argue it's what it should look like, right, in terms of what you're uh, discussing. Let me talk about the theme of your meeting in New York, uh, transforming institutions of governance to build forward better towards 2030. Of course, that's the deadline for the SDGs. I mean, it sounds like a, a, an election slogan in some uh, national context, but we're talking here about the backbone of a functional state. Broadly tell us what you're seeing and how you are seeking to remedy uh, some of the dysfunction. So you see, as an expert group, we don't uh, get involved in the actual remedy. Okay. We look at, let's call it the ideas or the thinking on it. Um, and to that end, in 2018, the Economic and Social Council of the UN adopted principles for the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, you know, issues like uh, leaving no one behind, mm. transparency, um, subsidiarity. Subsidiarity is in essence looking at all spheres of government and mm. uh, devolution of power and all that kind of thing. But I think we're looking at What's the human capital that's required to make, uh, to ensure a functional public service? What kinds of institutions are required that are resilient enough mm. to deal with shocks and actually stand even during and after those shocks? Um, and let me give you a specific example linked to the SDGs, the importance of public health. Right. And do we have a functional public health system? Because at the end of the day, maybe you and I, Sherwin, can opt out and look uh, and, and actually access private health care. But the majority yeah. of South Africans, Africans, or even people across the world 
can't do that. So we need to have a functional health system. And for that to happen, public health must work well. We need efficient and effective professionals working there at all levels. We need to ensure that the management is up to scratch. We need to ensure that procurement is what it should be so that your Charlotte Macleke is not months after a fire still in a state of disrepair when we know that for many uh, South Africans or Gautengers, mm. that's the main hospital they go to, whether it's for cancer treatment yeah. or something else. You touched on, on Goal 16, right? Goal 16 of the SDGs talks about promoting peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development and building effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. But it's often, I would argue, political decisions or political choices that undermine the very effectiveness and accountability we all seek. Does dysfunctional politics not poison the well? I mean, Check policy, uh, policy and politics uh, go together. But at the end of the day, your public service and public servant must be professional. And your public Say servant... Say it again. Yes, no, your public servant must be a professional who should not be seen as partisan. Because at the end of the day, if I'm the director general or, or even chief director in Department of Education, everyone may well know that I am and have been an ANC member. But I shouldn't say to someone, you can only get a service if you are a member of a particular political party. They must get a service because the Constitution mm. and Chapter 10 of the Constitution guarantees it. And because of the way in which I perform my function as a public servant, they may be keen to vote in a particular way, not because I have put pressure, but because I have served everyone in the community. I delivered a service impartially, right. I delivered it professionally, and I did it in the interest of the people of the country, or of the community, or in a particular ward for that matter. I'm going to, I'm going to be faulted for generalizing here, but let me ask you to generalize. Mm. Um, to what extent do you think that's happening in South Africa today? I think across the board, there's high levels of partisanship. And I recently addressed uh, the SALGA, South Africa Local Governments uh, Summit, and I said in that summit that at this point in time, in 2022, it's important for all public servants at all levels of government to actually cut through the political... Um, I may have used a word that's not too polite for Please. family time. We can beep it out. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to just cut across this whole issue of partisan divides and to work together. This is the moment to call on people mm -hmm. and say we've got to be audacious. We've got to respond to the challenges of the country. This is the point at which, at a local government level, it's not about a coalition partner wanting a particular seat, but it's about service delivery in a ward, people having access to clean and potable water. Mm. It's about sanitation provision and all that. And for that, we need a cadre of public servants that will work together, whichever sphere of government they are in. You, and it's a call for audacity. I'm glad you uh, uh, mentioned audacity. There's a former president in the United States that wrote a book called uh, The Audacity of Hope, and I think the sentiment uh, would certainly apply in South Africa too. More than half of South African municipalities find themselves in financial distress. Service delivery is a mess. Taps are running dry, power outages, infrastructure deficits, and there's a growing fear that the inability to get the basics right could further undermine economic stability and erode social cohesion in South Africa. What do you see 
as some of the root causes. I know you've talked about the lack of coherence uh, across the three levels of government. So diagnose some of the problems for us and, and what are some of the remedies and prescriptions you might be able to advise on? You know, there is something called a district development model in South Africa. And that uh, model is one that brings a plan together mm -hmm. across the district for a functional municipality. It should bring your provincial government, your national government in. It should be able to draw on social partners. It also brings the local players together. And together they, there is a blueprint that looks at the local economic development. Mm -hmm. And for that to function, I mean, uh, let's look at it differently. Just the points you've raised shows a complete breakdown right. of service delivery, but is also reflective of uh, absence of local economic development. So your district development model, if applied properly, should make that difference. But it means everybody must give, get involved. I was just uh, reading this article in the City Press over the weekend about the northwest province being on the verge of having to pay back 17 billion rand of unspent allocations back to national treasury because departments have been unable to spend that money what does that say about service delivery and the state of public service and administration in just that province it's quite problematic because we know that northwest um, is a poor province if you can call it that i think if you return that amount of money, it mm. shows dysfunction across provincial government. It would be interesting to know which departments um, are involved that has unspent funds. the Premier's funds. office is among them. <laughs> yeah. So um, right, right at the top, right? And right that's, at that's the probably, top. It's, it, it, it's a major problem. So there's a number of issues. Again, you need to look at the people. You need to look at the institutions there. You need to look at... Uh, what is the planning like? Is there a provincial development plan? Does it feed into the national plan? What is the local government plan? You know, because at the end of the day, yeah. you've got to have people who are able to drive these programs. So, so let, me, let, me, let me push you on that, right? So we often hear, you talk about people, we hear about the lack of skills in the public service in a world where issues of poverty, food uh, security, economic growth, climate disruptions, pandemic preparedness, geopolitical shocks uh, are a mere snapshot of some of the difficulties that might confront some of these people that work in public service and administration. So it begs the question, what kind of skill set is required for someone to be able to uh, properly function uh, given all the incoming that, that, that happens in, in positions uh, like that. Remember, um, we've got to look at a few things. So it depends where people are located. So in the various sectors, we spoke about health, education. If we look at safety and security, you need professionals yeah. that are trained in those areas. And I would assume that at this point in time, there is both a national skills database as well as provincial and hopefully a local government database that tells you who you have where mm -hmm. because that's the start. The second issue is you also need people with very strong planning skills if they are in management and coordination roles. You would want them to have uh, the ability to be able to deal with challenges, you know, people who crisis are management. able, yes, uh, crisis and risk management, be able to plan appropriately. You'd also assume that when it comes to the budget and procurement uh, functions, you have people who have the skills to carry that out. Right. And again, it's whether people are appointed in the right jobs. And it comes to the point you raised in the beginning, when you pushed me a little bit and you said, uh, are we, is there partisanship or not in particular positions? But that may not be the only problem. You also sometimes have, or many times, have elected officials wanting to interfere 
in administrative roles. And there needs to be a sort of separation. That's why you have a Public Finance Management Act. That's why you have a Municipal Finance Management Act. It's not a minister's business on who gets a tender on a particular contract. That, uh, you have a Director General who is the accounting authority. And I think there's a need to stop the interference across. There's been a lot of confusion about who, whose exactly, role is what exactly. Exactly, right? exactly. And you've got to separate that. Also, and I want to conclude on this point, on the, this particular matter, advisors cannot play management roles. Advisors advise the political uh, principles. They don't advise the public service unless there's a specific function for them. And we've seen too much blurring of that. I'm glad we've got the dictionary on public service in front of us today. Uh, Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase, wrote in a letter to shareholders this week on the US government. Our pop quote, our, our policies are often incomprehensible and uncoordinated, and our policy decisions fre frequently have no forethought and no identification of desired outcomes. Our politics are dysfunctional, which has prevented some of our best, brightest, and most competent uh, who, to, to want to work in government. Is that something that could be, could you take that quote out of the United States and sort of dump it in, in South Africa and see how it works there? You can dump it in many parts, parts of, of the, the world. world at this point in time. And it's an unfortunate uh, situation. Because you do need the best and the brightest in government, do you not? You Even know, though the salaries are, might, might not be the best, if you want to compare it to the private sector, but you still need competence, do you not? Yes, um, I think it was 2004, we actually said the public service in South Africa should be an employer of choice. I think that should still be the case going forward, because at the end of the day, you do want a revolving door. So you want yeah. Sherwin to come and do his national service. He should come from a public entity into the public service proper and then go back or go into the private sector. There's nothing that stops us, because maybe we should ask the question, some of the people that we have holding various or senior positions, whether it's elected or appointed, have they run a small business? Mm. Do they have understanding of how to deal with complexity? Do they know what, uh, how you need to respond at times of crisis? Can they handle the culture changes that are required. Your responses during a crisis is quite different from your responses at normal times, you know, if I can call it that. So you need a resilient public service and for that you need the skills and culture is key to that. We have a culture of Batupile, but in many instances you don't see that operating. Because public service is exactly about that. It's about service. Final question for you. Do you f is your sense that South Africa faces a real crisis in terms of the competence and level of skills it has in public administration? You know, I want to respond in a general way. And, and I spoke earlier about uh, uh, skills audit. I do believe that there are competent public servants but they may be lower level, at a lower level in the public service and not have the opportunity to, to really be as impactful as they should be. And I think in many instances, uh, you know, you have the rotten apples and there's been quite a few, sadly, and the focus is on them and yeah. the good ones are forgotten. And it also leads to a demoralization. We need to change that around. Mm. The public service is the most exciting place to be. It's, it's actually, you know, it's something that must make people's blood run fast, if I can use it. That, but use it also, that it's there to make people's lives better. better. So and I it's mean, very much a backbone of society. You know, I've, I've said in many instances, uh, pre, uh, pre, in previous incarnations, I've said, all of us have a public servant in the family.
do we hold that person accountable if there are challenges in service delivery or are we ready to point at someone else? Mm. I mean, if there is accountability and it goes back to the question that you ask, what is required at this point for the public service to work well? And one of it is accountability and another is consequence management as well. Geraldine Fraser Moloketi, thank you so very much indeed. Thank you. Geraldine Fraser Moloketi, former government, government minister, former director of governance practice in the Bureau of Poli uh, Development Policy at UNDP, that's the development program of the UN, former gender envoy at the African Development Bank, just re-elected as Chancellor of Nelson Mandela University and just re-elected as chair of the Bureau of, UN, of the UN Committee of Experts in Public Administration.